if there are no questions here, then we can go to our next point, which is uh, the biggest mistakes that you should avoid. As I said, it was really difficult to narrow it down to these five, uh, but I kind of wanted to go through the things that will make the most impact and that you can actually use right now today. Uh, the other things that didn't make the cut are um, about the style of the bot, about the amount of text, because some people tend to create huge chunks of text um, and it doesn't feel natural in a messaging app that's actually, you know, you spend your time with friends and family there, so it's, it's not really natural that, that you're going to have, you know, it looks like someone's in trouble if there's a big chunk of text. So yeah, the first thing is I often see people not thinking through the purpose of their bot. Um, it's really important to start with a very clear idea of where you want to go. So what is my bot's purpose? Who is my um, target audience? Who is like my, the average person who is going to use this bot? What do they want to achieve? And how am I going to help them achieve it in the simplest way possible? We don't want them to get lost. We don't want them to get confused. We want our bot to have a very, very clear purpose. And we want to have it in writing because when we have it in writing, it's easy to see the mistakes. It's easy to see what we're missing. It's easy to see all of those little things that might be, you know, bugging us later. Um, the second very common mistake is leaving dead ends in the flow. Um, the, your user comes to a situation where you serve them a block, and after that, there isn't a button, there isn't a clear indicator of where they should go next and what they should do. And they're kind of stuck there, you know? Um, that is something you should avoid at every cost. So review your flow, go through it, have your friends go through it, have your teammates go through it and point, okay, I didn't know what to do when I got here, you know? and add buttons, um, help them go back to the previous step if they're, if they're not happy with their previous response and so on and so on. It's just a little bit of being mindful that can go a long way. Uh, the third one is you should, as much as possible, guide your users through the bot. Give them choices instead of letting them um, type too many things on their own. So you have buttons, you have quick replies, you have galleries, you have all these different options. So whenever you can, have your users clicking on, you know, predefined choices instead of letting them go wild around your bot. Uh, it's not going to be a pleasant experience for them, like, more often. Um, so I think it's really, really important for a good um, bot flow, for a clear, um, I think for the usefulness you know, to the end user. Uh, that doesn't mean there isn't a space for um, free user input where they can type their own responses, their own feedback and stuff like that, which you can collect using the um, user attribute or user input plugin. Um, save user input plugin, that's the correct name for, uh, for any new users who <laughs> wanna like look for it around the dashboard. Uh, it's a really useful tool. Yes, feel free to collect feedback, feel free to collect any other, you know, um, things that might fit in with your bot, but don't overdo it. Um, number four is, I think, really important more now than ever. Um, if it's not easy for the user to unsubscribe from your bot, they will end up blocking your bot, blocking your page. And this is negative feedback that is counted that Facebook accounts for your page that can lead to some very uncomfortable consequences. Uh, they can block your um, messaging. They can even, in extreme cases, uh, block your, your entire page, delete it, unpublish it, and stuff like that. That is a very, very extreme thing, and you would have to violate a lot of rules for that to happen, but it is a thing that can happen. It's actually very, very easy to set this up. I just pointed out. Um, wanted to point it out, out one of very simple ways to do it. Everyone has a persistent menu they can enable. They can enable in the configure tab of their bot. Uh, set up an unsubscribe button there. 
that literally leads the user into a block where you set up a, an attribute that indicates they want to unsubscribe. There can be, uh, this can also be an AI rule that when user types unsubscribe or stop or cancel or something like that, that takes them into the same place. This can, this is the simplest version possible. If you have more types of re-engage messages, you're sending different types of content and stuff like that, this can get more complicated, but the basic principle is pretty much the same. So don't let, this, this took literally 60 seconds <laughs> to set up. Uh, don't let those 60 seconds be, um, you know, what's, what stands between you and your page having positive reviews instead of uh, negative reviews. If you need any tips on how to do this specifically for your case, you can always reach out to us and we would be more than happy to help. Yes, and the last thing is a lot of people see this as a set it and forget it tool. You know, I'm going to set it up once and then I'm going to check in on it in a year. Uh, the bot really is an amazing tool to automate those most boring, most uh, demanding tasks that, uh, you know, you don't want to have a human do. But there's also always so much room for it to evolve, to give a better user experience to the people who are actually using it. And there's also, you know, your users are going to need human attention at some point if you're handling more complex questions, for example. So everyone, at least every once in a while, in a while check in on your bot. You should be able to identify any uh, bottlenecks that, that are um, appearing, users getting confused about a thing, uh, frequent questions you're getting that you're not currently answering. And it's actually like, I think most of us will do an evaluation of most of our business processes every once in a while. And I think this is a really important one to evaluate, especially if a bot is something you rely on daily to handle your uh, user inquiries.